Do you want a low-cost, lightweight, multi-band HF field antenna for amateur radio use? Let's build one out of some speaker wire. Next on AA3K On The Go. When I started my QRP journey in amateur radio, I obviously needed uh, an antenna that would be as portable as the lightweight QRP radio equipment that I was going to be carrying, which is a Yaesu FT817. So of course, I watched some YouTube videos to see what was out there, and I came across a video about building a lightweight, low-cost, multiband capable HF doublet antenna out of speaker wire and I said that's the antenna for me so I ordered some speaker wire and put one together now as a doublet antenna this antenna is not resonant on any particular frequency uh, it does have a lowest frequency of operation and it is based upon the length of the antenna that you cut it to you will need to use an antenna matching unit to make sure your radio sees a good impedance match with the antenna now the key thing to this antenna that as a doublet it's not fed with coax but rather it's fed with twin lead open wire or in our case speaker wire, which will be a twin lead. And the advantage to using a twin lead type of configuration is the losses are very low, even at high SWRs. Uh, there's a table out there and you can see for 50 ohm coax, such as RG8X, your losses can be 10 or more dB with a severe mismatch. But the same severe mismatch with twin lead is barely a dB, usually much less than that. So eventually all of that energy will make it up to the antenna and be radiated. Now, in particular, since my recent test of mini coax, which has shown that there's a significant amount of loss in RG174 and 316, uh, I'm gonna be reconsidering doing my portable QRP field activations with the speaker wire antenna that I've built. And I'm gonna show you how I went about putting it together. Now, I am not gonna be showing you every single step of the build. Every single one of these speaker wire antennas that I have seen, there is always some differences in its assembly. And these are the particular steps that I took to make mine. Without much further ado, let's go into the antenna in a little bit more detail. Okay, let's take a look at how I put this doublet antenna together. Uh, I first decided that I wanted my lowest frequency of operation to be 7 megahertz. So, running a quick calculation, that it turned out I needed two 35-foot legs of this doublet antenna. So, just peel out 35 feet from the 100-foot hunk of speaker wire that I purchased. And you can just see the little sharpie mark that i put on the wire here now since i put, peeled out 35 feet once i separate these two legs i'll have the appropriate length of each leg of the dipole uh, i then after separating the two to the point that i marked on the speaker wire i then tied an electrician's knot which is shown in an inset. It's also known as an underwriter's knot or a lamp cord knot. So any tugging on these two legs of the doublet antenna will not open up the twin lead feed any further. You could potentially use a zip tie, but this wire, this particular wire is so small in diameter, I don't think you would get a good grip on it. If you were to use actually the 18 gauge speaker wire that I showed or actual lamp cord, uh, you can probably get a grip, but it's not that hard to tie that electrician's knot. The only hard part is feeding the long length of a leg through the loop that you create for the electrician's knot. I then decided, after a surprising amount of thought, how much down lead I wanted. And I just decided to finally go with the same length, 35 feet of wire that I had, and then cutting that off the length of wire that I had. How you hang this, I've seen several different ways. I've seen some people thread a zip tie through these loops here. 
Um, in my case, I had this short bite of paracord, so I tied a knot at the end and tied a loop at the top and just used a couple of zip ties to hold the down lead to here and cinch them up pretty tight. When you set this antenna up, you do not want this down lead to be near any metal. You want to keep it at least a couple of feet away, uh, possibly even keep it off the ground. Uh, I was using this antenna once in my backyard with a little patio table that has a metal edge and all of a sudden I noticed my SWR was going crazy and the wire had shifted a little bit and was now literally just resting against the edge of this table where the metal was and that was enough to throw things off. Once I moved the table and my setup back a, a foot or two, got this off the edge of the table, the tuning returned to uh, acceptable le levels. At each end of the legs, all I did was fold back two or three inches of the speaker wire and use one of these large butt splices that I had and crimped the end on itself to create a loop. You could just tie a knot, actually use a proper antenna insulator. I got this from the KM4 ACK shop. I'll leave a link to that in the description, no affiliations. Uh, however you want to do. In my case, I decided the cord that I attached to each end would be the insulator and I wouldn't have any separate thing. And it's been working out fine for me. As for this cord that I attached, I just got a 50 foot hunk of this at uh, a local big box store and cut it in half, sealed the ends with some heat so it wouldn't unravel just tied it off here and the other end is free that allows me to tie off to a stake in the ground, other tree limbs, bushes, or whatever I want to do to hold the antenna up. And that's it. Really fast to build. You can probably put one, once you have the speaker wire, you can put one of these together in within an hour pretty easily. And the advantages is you do not have to do any hard measurements. If you want it to be seven megahertz, about 35 feet. If you're a foot longer, a foot shorter, it makes no difference. You will be using this antenna with an antenna matching unit, which will get the impedance down to where the radio is happy. As for connecting this to your antenna matching unit, I would just have the speaker wire stripped at the end here, and I would insert it into the hole within the banana plug connector on my antenna matching unit. But I did find that this wire within the insulation here is so fine, it did break off once or twice. Not a big deal, just take a little bit more off and spread it. Uh, as you can see, I don't have this string relieved in any particular way. I probably should add something here, but I ended up putting these spade lugs on so it would be a little bit faster to slide it on those banana posts and cinch them down. And since I've put these spade lugs on, I haven't had any particular problem and I just crimped them in place. I did not bother soldering them. And you can build a doublet antenna using ladder line, uh, open wire such as this, TV, twin lead. Uh, and use it effectively in the field. Fundamentally, that's not a problem. What the problem is, I think it's a little bit difficult to wind this stuff up and carry it with you, especially if you're gonna be doing a bit of a hike to your operating location. Um, I had almost forgotten that I had this ladder line and looking at it, and I'll do an inset picture, I see one broken uh, spacer in here and another one where the wire is off the spacer. So. Um, I can probably fix both of those problems with a little uh, epoxy cement of some sort. But it, if I have a winder like this to carry with me in the field, which I could make out of some wood or some additional cardboard and make a, uh, a convenient way to carry this, it is a little bit on the bigger side as compared to the actual speaker wire doublet that I did build. So I've used this antenna for one parks on the air activation, which worked out very well. I made about 25 to 30 contacts uh, at QRP power levels with the FT817. And I've used this a bunch of times in my backyard when I've just been playing with my uh, FT817 and trying to make a few uh, either just general amateur radio contacts or chase some parks on the air stations. And it has always worked for me. Uh, I intend to give this a little bit more use in the field now that I have discovered how much uh, loss you'll have in mini coax, such as RG174 and RG316. This antenna does have several advantages. It's cheap, easy to make, uh, it is very effective, and uh, 
but it does have a few downsides. The overall length at 65 feet on the two legs and being held up in the center, say as an inverted V configuration, will can be a little bit difficult to set up. Uh, I have often found when I've been setting up dipoles in the field that I can get the one leg down easily in a direction I want, but the other leg I'm running into other tree branches or such that just makes it very difficult to set up and I have to choose a different orientation. With an end-fed half-wave, you only have to go into one direction. Uh, I chose a down lead length of 35 feet, about the same length as each leg of this uh, doublet. And that just kind of limits where I can set up in relationship to where I hang the antenna. With 50 feet of coax, which is what I typically use, I have a lot more choices in setting up. And I can use a further away tree, say with an end-fed half wave, and then bring the matching end closer to my picnic table or car or wherever I'm operating from. Another downside to this antenna is that this 24 gauge speaker wire is not particularly strong. I think through use, one leg of this doublet did get stretched out and was a six or seven inches longer than the other end. Uh, and another time I set it up, which really, by the way, which really didn't affect the tuning. Since I have to use an antenna matching unit, you'll tune out any mismatch there. And that is, by the way, another advantage to this antenna. You don't have to tune it. You put it together. If you want to, say, do 40 meters, you do about 35 feet of wire. Uh, you can possibly even make it a little bit more compact and make it five-eighths of a wavelength long. But the, uh, after it broke, I just folded back uh, the broken end, which was on the longer leg, and just used another butt splice terminal clamp to put the, uh, make a new loop and tie the cord to the end. Uh, you know, it does wrap up pretty, t pretty compactly. Uh, deploying it though, you know, you do have to lay this out across the ground and in my case, since I don't have separate winders for each of the legs, I do have to get them separated so I can get them up in the air. But it may take a few minutes longer than a end-fed half wave to set up, but not particularly problematic there. So, have you built a speaker wire doublet? If so, why don't you put it in the comments and mention uh, what the lowest frequency operation you cut it for and we can continue the discussion there. If you'd like to find out more about what I discovered in how much losses are present in mini coax, take a look at the video linked at the end. Hey, I'm Mark, AA3K. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on AA3K on the go. 73.